हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द सेशन ऑन एनवायरमेंटल मैनेजमेंट आई एम मिस्टर मनोज मोता डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग शरद इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग सो एनवायरमेंटल मैनेजमेंट इट कैन बी डिफाइंड एज द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ द इंटरेक्शन एंड इम्पैक्ट ऑफ ह्यूमन एक्टिविटीज ऑन द नेचुरल एनवायरमेंट एनवायरमेंटल मैनेजमेंट ट्राइज टू आइडेंटिफाई the factors that has a stake in the conflicts that may arise between meeting the need but protecting the environment so we can quite aware that the current environmental situation is not good and the major reason behind the degradation of environment is various anthropogenic or human activities which has started degrading it and because of that the environmental management has gained a certain importance in the current society so an environmental management system protects public health and safety by establishing procedures to limit or to eliminate harmful substance from entering into the environment including public water system every organization in some way affect the environment which directly affect the public health in brief environmental management is necessary for environmental planning which implies the optimal utilization of the resources and preservation of the quality of environment for the healthy growth of society so the components of environmental management are based on five fundamental aspects the first is environmental perception and public awareness here how all are percepting the environmental behavior is considered whether the environment is able to dilute the impact of the various anthropogenic activities or it is uh, unable to sustain against it is the major concern in this first uh, fundamental aspect and on that the public awareness needs to be increased second is environmental education and training third is resource management fourth is control of environmental degradation and pollution and last is environmental impact assessment these are the basic fundamental aspects which are in line with environmental management so what is and why this environmental management is necessary strictly speaking environmental management is necessary because it is nationally mandated requirement for nearly every type of business various national regulations regulates and limits the impact that business have on local environment quality and public health essentially environmental management focuses on resource consumption and waste generation this is even equally applicable in the government sector which deals with the public health and which are responsible for providing various uh, major uh, things currently uh, are in line with the environmental management like solid waste management the supply of water and uh, other similar things now what is an ems ems is nothing but environmental management system it is a framework that help us help an organization achieve its environmental goals through consistent review evaluation and improvement of its environmental performance this consistent review and evaluation will identify opportunities for improving and implementing the environmental performance of that organization the environmental management system itself does not dictate a level of environmental performance that must be achieved because each organization the ems is tailored to the own individual objectives and target the every system generally used to have their own requirements in terms of their performance in line with environmental requirements and because of that the environmental management systems are specifically designed for every organization as such or every individual sector as such and uh, that can be tailored to the requirement of that particular specific industry the basic elements of ems the ems generally used to do the following things they are reviewing the organization's environmental goals then they are analyzing its environmental impacts and legal requirements after that the ems or environmental management system setting environmental objectives and targets 
to reduce the environmental impacts and comply with legal requirements establishing programs to meet these objectives and targets then monitoring and measuring progress in achieving the objectives ensuring employees environmental awareness and competence and at last reviewing progress of the system and making improvement so an environmental management system is a set of processes and practices that enables an organization to reduce its environmental impact and increase its operating efficiency it helps an organization address its regulatory demands in a systematic and cost effective manner this proactive approach can help to reduce the risk of non compliance and improve health and safety practices for employees and the public so the benefits the potential benefits of having an ems at place are as follows it is improved environmental performance of the organization then the enhanced compliance with the all compliances to be followed by the uh, government laws and regulations as such it also results in prevention of pollution it conserves the resources it makes the new customers and markets for the such avoid mark uh, avoid products increased efficiency and because of that the reduced cost enhanced employee morale enhanced image with public regulators lenders and investors and last employee awareness of environmental issues and responsibilities these are the potential benefits claimed by the organization having its environmental management system being proactive in that there are various standards available iso 14000 series is one such series which provides the guidance in line with the environmental requirement so iso 14001 standard it is the most commonly used framework for an ems and is one developed by the international organization of standardization or iso for the iso 14001 standards it is established in 1996 this framework is the official international standard for an environmental management system which is based on the plan do check and act methodology the stages of ems there are five main stages of any environmental management system as such which have been defined by iso 14001 standards first is commitment and policy second is planning the implementation evaluation and final is review so we'll try to understand these in a, a bit more in detail so commitment and policy top management commits to environmental improvement and establishes the organization's environmental policy the policy is the foundation for the ems so here what essential is to have a documented policy and a commitment to follow that second is planning which is once again subdivided into number of steps so in planning the first step is the identification of environmental aspect of its operation these operations uh, might be like uh, air pollutants or hazardous waste that has been discharged in an environment and by one way or another resulting in the degradation of environment and uh, by in the and ultimately resulting in some sort of unsustainable development kind of thing second is the determination of significant aspect where the organization defines what is significant for them like workers health and safety the environmental compliance the cost of the product are certain significant aspect so company determines what are the significant aspect for that system to be followed third is the setting objective and target for example the company decides to reduce a uh, use of certain uh, raw material like chemical by a certain percent so that its environmental uh, behavior in terms of uh, requirement of environment is appropriate one example can be a certain uh, company using a certain chemical is deciding to reduce its uh, use by a certain percent say uh, 25% up to a certain limited time span so like reduce the use of chemical x by 25% 
by September 2020 can be a certain objective or target a company can set. After that, devising an action plan for meeting the targets so that uh, they can achieve this particular objective uh, appropriately. So that uh, particular things like uh, designating responsibilities, establishing a schedule, outlining a clearly defined steps to meet this target. Implementation An organization follows through with the action plan using the necessary resources. The resources can be a human resource, can be a financial resource, can be an, uh, something very similar to the resources like this. An important component is employee training and awareness for all employees. Other steps in the implementation stage includes documentation, following operation procedures and setting up internal and external communication lines. Evaluation. A company monitors its operations to evaluate whether the targets are being met. If not, the company takes corrective action. Review. Top management reviews the result of evaluation to see if the EMS is working. Management determines whether the original environmental policy is consistent with the organizational values. The plan is then revised to optimize the effectiveness of the EMS. The review stage creates a loop of continuous improvement for a company. Next is environmental impact assessment. This stage is essential for very large companies, which is in advance before actual commencement, the environmental assessment is done. So environmental impact assessment or EIA is a process which ensures that all environmental matters are taken into account quite early in the project at a planning process itself. It takes into consideration not only technical and economical considerations, but also traditional aspects like impact on local people, biodiversity, etc. The essential elements of any EIA system are as follows. First is the identification of possible positive or negative impacts of the project on the environment. Then quantifying these impacts with respect to a certain common baseline. Preparation of mitigation plan to offset the negative impacts. Now why we need EIA? EIA is intended to prevent or minimize potentially adverse environmental impacts and enhance the overall quality of a project. The main benefits are as follows. The lower project cost in long term, increased project acceptance, improved project design, then informed decision making, environmentally sensitive decisions, increased accountability and transparency, reduced environmental damage, improved integration of projects into their environmental and social settings. The IA should identify, describe and assess all the direct and indirect effects on human beings, flora and fauna, soil, water and air, climate and the landscape material assets, cultural heritage, interaction between all the factors. So all these are considered in the EIA process. So therefore, EIA should have a very strong social dimension. EIA clearance is required in India for the 32 categories of developmental work. They are broadly categorized industrial sectors as mining sector, thermal power plant sector, river valley sector, Infrastructural sector like road, highway, port, harbor and airport development. Industries including very small electroplating or foundry units. And certain activities permissible under Coastal Regulation Zone Act 1991 also requires a similar clearance. The broad discussion on these is beyond the scope of this session. So to summarize, environmental management can be considered all the practice, policies and procedures that a facility undertake in order to comply with local, state and federal environmental legislation. This means a monitoring release of pollutants to the air, water and west streams. An environmental management system is a set of process and practices that makes an organization to reduce its inverse impact on the environment. So thank you. Thank you for attending this section session and thank you for having me.